Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question, and that is Peace and Harmony, can you please discuss some of the red flags that we can focus in on and concentrate on so when this comes up in a relationship, we can identify it and really, it's my viewpoint that once you understand the red flags, it can be a huge relief to healing once you understand what are the red flags that you had skipped, missed, were blind to, didn't know about, but can see clearly now the rain has gone. You know, what are some of the red flags? I, I really also want to kind of emphasize this, that I, I discussed this sort of coming from the psychology background and English background um, that I studied in university is that, you know, it, it's important to understand the experiential side, um, how you feel, what you really literally, what your body is telling you. Um, your body is a, a, a barometer of truth. Um, it, you know, if you have a heart, if you have a conscience, you will also, you know, usually have something called empathy which oftentimes gives you the ability to understand what others are going through and find this important, significant, and oftentimes, you know, it creates to wanting to help them, serve them, rescue them, you know, um, do good by them, um, all these good intentions. But this oftentimes can deplete others. Um, that having a big heart can cause others to feel um, very empty-handed because others will then take advantage of your niceness. You know, the nice girl, the nice guy, they just keep, you know, taking advantage. And people don't see the forest for the trees. They lose perspective, I would say, while they're in the midst or the development of this relationship. And so it has to be an experiential, which means understanding your feelings as a good barometer or, or indicator or uh, like needle on a compass, you know, which is pointing you in the right direction. Um, I had a great experience as a young, uh, a youngster, a youngster, uh, you know, going to Girl Scout camp. I loved, uh, Girl Scouts, you know, earning the badges, having the sash. Um, you know, we would work on, um, these wonderful skills that were like survivor skills and we would make all sorts of cool things and sell Girl Scout cookies. Um, but what was I going to say? One of the, hmm, why was I bringing that up? Anyway, we'll talk about that later. But, you know, one of the experiential, you know, is, is the red flag, just sort of understanding survival skills and understanding how this then is, um, in, in a relationship exchange. In other words, how can you catch it while you're in the midst of it? Um, and so the, one of the red flags we we're talking about earlier is you feel an inab inability to contribute or communicate. What are some of the red flags that you are involved in a narcissistic relationship, a psychopathic relationship as well? I think there are, are some very, you know, very important differences. So we can really try to talk about both in this video. But I would say namely that is shared <clears throat> is not only a change of communication style and adaption, but oftentimes an adaption to an embracing a false self or way of communicating. So particularly with the narcissist, um, one of the red flags is feeling the inability that you can contribute, you can speak freely. You know, um, and it doesn't mean that you're going to be insultory and derogatory, but you just can't contribute, share, have fun, talk about your experience, talk about your viewpoint, or contribute, meaning share, or add, or participate equally in the relationship or in especially the communication. There is an indifferent, there is a, a difference, <clears throat> there is a difference of the sort of I am, then that is then created and reinforced in that experience, I would say. Um, the I am is significant in this recovery of your healing and your relief. 
um, is to know and understand the red flags and its impact, not only its, um, its presentation to you, its experience for you, it's how you process it and how you navigate it and then how you define your I am as a result. So there's like a lot of, um, you know, <clears throat> um, psychological process, I feel, um, unpacking this for people that is important to understand kind of the A to the A and a half to the B to the B and a half, <clears throat> you know, understanding the red flags. Um, so you can understand the hurdles, the obstacles that were put up um, as to create an effect of disempowerment and oftentimes victimization, exploitation, taking advantage, or just straight over, you know, waffling over others, what I might call um, steamrolling over others, just making them less than three-dimensional, you know, making them, making you out to be a two-dimensional person. Um, as if where you're coming from is wrong or unattractive. As if where you're coming from is disgusting or not important. As if you are uh, coming from a place where you are wrong. You know, this is a red flag. I would feel in relationships where people will sort of um, exude um, without it being factually so that you are wrong, that you are in the wrong, that you, you are wrong. So it, it is then sort of equated as a permanent aspect of self, which is erroneous and flawed. That's how they manipulate is getting you to be brainwashed and gaslighted and believing that you are wrong, that your, I am, that you as a physical being presence, are wrong or not to be um, acknowledged, validated, um, communicated with, um, acknowledged in the very basics. Um, hi, how are you? You know, if it's done, it is done with what you might call gratuitous greetings, gratuitous, uh, <clears throat> which I, I feel are fake. Um, but I love these words and we're going to kind of do a little bit of <laughs> gratuitous, uncalled for, lacking good reason, or unwarranted. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm just sort of, you know, done to just sort of um, get rid of you or to satisfy you just to kind of cover the tracks, just to sort of, um, to me, it's very, um, it's just uncalled for, meaning it's not done <clears throat> It's not done with, with gravitas or it's not done with, with gratitude or humility or authenticity. It's just, just sort of, um, gratuitous. Um, if you have another word or that experience, or if you know what I'm talking about, it's just, in other words, it's, it's just to sort of, you know, you say that you're thirsty and they just kind of throw you a little bit of a drink, you know, it's just, you, you say that I'm here and they just go, oh yeah. And then they keep walking. You know, it's done to be sort of disrespectful. It's done to sort of leave you with a damaged feeling. It's done to sort of, you know, heap a, um, just to sort of dump on you, <clears throat> dump on others. In other words, just sort of, you know, I, I call it just sort of a, a narcissistic shock and awe that the narcissist, you know, also the narcissist block, you might call it the end block. Um, where they just sort of block people. Let's just call it the N block or the narcissist block. They just sort of block others or shut them down. And this gets, I feel is very practiced and rehearsed on the, on the, all the time for the narcissist to cover up their insecurity or, you know, what, what they are trying to hide or conceal. So it's a way for them to be pushy, bullying, opportunistic, um, toxic, get away with things, um, just sort of, you know, just sort of get away with things. It's sort of the MO. Um, and very much like the alcoholic, they just, they, there's a lot that they want to get away with. <clears throat> this makes them feel um, great, um, wonderful, on top of the world, narcissistic happiness is at an all time high. You know, if they can get away with something, this pumps them up. This, 
you know, they feel that they it's part of their entitlement that gets satisfied, and and so it's uh, entitlement sort of means an unwarranted. You know, it's it's unwarranted. It's not called for. It doesn't have a reason. So oftentimes, the narcissist, it, they're a red flag is that they're always always sort of out of context. Um, um, that they try to sort of you know um, change the subject, change the reality change your I am and once they have power over that it's like a a puppet if they can change your I am to the negative wow they've just bankrupted you emotionally they've bankrupted you spiritually they've disempowered you effectively they've gotten you out of your battery pack they've just whoop unplugged you and discharged your I am and so then people then are around this for long enough and then they feel that they are less than. They feel that they are unprivileged. They feel that they can't speak up. They feel, you know, they don't have enough experience. You know, they feel down and out. They feel disengaged. They feel disconnected. All these as a result oftentimes of this sort of narcissistic block. <clears throat> also with that comes, I feel that they sort of edge others out. Edge others out. Edging God out is a good way to understand the ego. The ego is always based on comparison. The narcissist is always basing their interaction based on a comparison. And if they, to them, they're always looking for the win, the more, you know, it's just, you know, they just want to pull, you know, everything for themselves. It's like, this is all mine. All this is mine. You all, your perspective is mine. They're trying to take credit where credit is not due. It's a good old-fashioned gaslighting heist, emotional heist, emotional manipulation, um, painting the scene, um, disrupting your I am from the positive and putting it in the negative so it can put you on unstable ground and disempowered. People might call this a bully behavior, uh, someone who wants to dominate, someone who is a who is pushy, a pushover, bossy. You know, you might have a lot of words for this already, but understand that this also sometimes a lot of these then go unchecked or accepted. In other words, they're just bossy, they're just a bully, and then people accept it, and then they accept they accept being taken advantage of. This is not right. This is not fair to you. This is not fair to others. I would call this, they're just sort of blacking others out, edging God out. And if you are, you are part of the divine, you're part of the divine being, you are part of it. You have, we have a collective unconscious, you know, you can study Jung, Freud, you can study science, you can study spirituality, whatever it is you want to study or not study, realize that you your heart is beating, you are a sentient feeling individual, and inside you know when you have been taken advantage of. You know what you know, what you know, what you know, what you know. But oftentimes, this cannot be admitted, realized, or discussed in the presence of a narcissist who constantly blacks, 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 edges others out, edges others out. Um, word wise, um, picture wise, um, they're just, it's not, there's not a two way street. There is a one way. Um, and then people are then forced to accept oftentimes and diminish themselves in order to make room. You know, there's a constant needing to make room. You know, their ego is too big. They have to take up too much space, too much airtime, too much whatever, whatever, it is very, you know, and it is based on a comparison. In other words, the, it is a communication that I am better. I am, it's a very black and white. <clears throat> it can only be them. There is no us. They are threatened by an us. So a red flag is when you'll, you'll see this sort of, you know what, you might call it, remember, you know, the old joke in a lot of movies, you know, the teenagers, Oh, that was a C block, you know, you're blocking me from 
hooking up with this guy or you're blocking me from hooking up with this girl or whatever, you know, <clears throat> you're, you're inhibiting me. You're getting in my way. <clears throat> Narcissists will, will do that in order to take what they want to take to sort of block you out. And so they can get an upper hand. This is their MO, which means it is an all the time personality with them. It's not just, you know, for something that they feel that they, um, deserve it's what they it is an entitlement attitude so it's an all the time attitude situation it's not something that you might encounter once in a great while that you have to deal with it is an all the time um you know it is an all the time situation and they want to dominate which oftentimes is not fair to others but people don't recognize the unfairness they don't recognize that people are being steamrolled, edged out, being disrespected, being shut out, being silenced, um, not allowed to be, act, or live, or engage, which, you know, as a social cr creature, you know, you're, you need to be able to have relationships, discussions, language, a pat on the back, a high five, an eye contact, you know, if not, you're, you're very, you're depriving yourself and it becomes unhealthy. <clears throat> so people then don't understand or identify this red flag. So if you can identify this and go, whoa, you know, this has really, you know, been a factor, then identify this as a red flag. This is an experiential red flag. So it is something oftentimes that you have experienced and know to be the case. So once you know this, then you can then stand up for self. You can observe and identify. And this is creating boundaries and standards, which are experiential for you, which will make it easier for you to identify and protect and not fall victim to. But furthermore, not fall I am victim, meaning your identity that you have then reinforced within yourself or has been reinforced by so many other situations because it's been so <clears throat> repetitive. This might be going on for some time now. This might be going on for five, eight, ten years. So it's become very defined or ingrained, but that does not mean it cannot be corrected. I, I feel especially significant right now in the event of a pandemic now that people are quarantining, now that people are not engaging as, you know, the ordinary consumptive lifestyle or the places where they would go, they're no longer having those outlets either for their work or their restaurants or their bars or their parks or their school or everything, their, um, their, their uh, spirituality. A lot of people then are needing to uh, confront and come up with solutions. And especially now during this huge reset, uh, this is how I feel it is. Um, you can then see and then say, okay, you know, that was then, this is now, you know, um, and especially now I feel, you know, that you then need to understand how you, where the blocks and the limits have been set up, which then create, you know, self-limiting beliefs which you believe about yourself, which are based on these limitations because of lack of experience, you know, and lack of, of positive seeds being planted or because of a ton of negative seeds being planted. So you've got a garden growing of a lot of negative I am, or, you know, that then create a lot of judgment and negative self judgment, but furthermore, you know, allow you to continue to be re-victimized and re-injured and re-hurt and <clears throat> just solidifies it more and more. The old say it's like the nail in, you know, the nail in the heart or the nail, like we're saying in the African art, where it's like they have the fetish figures with the, the big pieces of um, nail in their head. It's like nailed in their head. I, I don't know if that's what, what they're trying to communicate, but that's what I take of it you know, um, ob observing and appreciating that art. Um, so art is significant, I think, in moments like this. Communication is significant. Um, 
rehabbing your I am is significant and you know, to a certain degree, calling out specific situations that you no longer want to participate in. What I call bad emotional habits, bad, you know, consumptive habits. People might have been consuming a lot of negative um, media, too much negative media, too many negative relationship experiences. Um, and they continue to keep this going because they, they're just used to keeping a negative going. So they're creating problems for themselves all over again because they're so used to being, you know, immersed in a lot of problems. They're so used to being, you know, inundated with problems that they just keep it going. They just keep the crisis going for themselves. If things start to get better, you know, they then gamble their life away and then they're backsliding again. <clears throat> so, you know, and oftentimes I think narcissists and those people, you know, they want to dominate. They want to take this as an opportunity to, this is my chance to dominate. I think a lot of narcissists come in and then they feel that I want to dominate this situation to sort of overcompensate for their insecurity, um, their feeling of inferiority. They overcompensate just like, you know, the big hat, no cattle or the big truck, you know, um, no cargo, whatever it is, you know, big ego, no, you know, no experience. Um, and so they want to dominate, but they want to dominate by being a bully, a pushover, an opportunistic, an entitlement. That is their MO. That's what, like a program, that is how they are programmed. And people then will then treat them according to their programming when they take advantage of people, especially those people with a big heart, empathy, you know, are listening, are supportive, are fixer uppers. You know, you've got your emotional construction crew. Oh, wow. You know, here comes, you know, a real fixer upper, you know, people then live like they are, have a whole emotional fixer up crew. Oh, come on in. We got to get, you know, you know, and so they end up getting taken advantage of. This is not right. This is not fair. But then people then get addicted or used to or numbed out to being taken advantage of where then they flip, you know, um, their positive I am to being taken advantage of. This becomes codependency. This becomes victimization. This becomes victimhood. This becomes unfair and this never works out well. It does not end well. It hurts people and people end up getting taken advantage of. We had a viewer who talked about this dynamic in a relationship with a um, individual um, in her family who took a lot of the other family's belongings. And I know we have a, a lot of situations like this here in the channel. In fact, I should probably do more videos to respond to their inquiries. <clears throat> we get a lot of questions and we can do that, but I think this will be relevant to both. Um, I think their, their question is, you know, um, well, we'll go to that in another video, <clears throat> but the, the blocking, um, of others, I think if you feel that you have been blacked out, edged out, that you have, you know, <clears throat> you can see this in clicks, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see this at clicks in, um, in the workplace. We should probably do a Google, uh, live here. I don't know. You know, my videos tend to go on for a long period of time um, because we get going on a stream of thought. And I think sometimes people like the longer videos. I don't know if you like the shorter. We're going to wrap it up here because I know people have a short attention span. But remember, you can always put it on pause and come back. Um, but I would say one of the key factors is trying to, you know, um, uncover your discomfort from getting out from behind the block, coming out from behind the block, where if you've been blocked out a lot, you haven't pursued opportunity, you haven't pursued, pursued a lot of decisiveness. Um, you might be selling yourself short, um, because you have been, had this type of relationship dynamic for so long that it is all, you know, it is all you have experienced. So especially now in this great pandemic, you can identify where you have been limited. Um, you can identify 
where your belief in self has been limited. You can understand where you have been, you know, deliberately limited in your life by these relationships where then people then become addicted or used to or perpetuate this, which is known as codependence or getting nowhere in your life. Um, not being able to own a positive I am. Feeling that you are living your life, you are in alignment with your purpose and you're, um, you're growing you know, and you're contributing. As you get older, you need to be able to have a degree of contribution and, you know, sort of being able to give. Um, you need to be able to feel that you are effectual. You need to be able to know that you can give um, from all your years, that you have a lot to give. Otherwise, people feel that their life is hollow, meaningless, insignificant, their life was off course. It is never too late to recognize this. We do have a lot of viewers on the channel who have been suffering, if not for years, for decades. And I say that in the plurality. They have been suffering this perhaps even for a lifetime. <clears throat> and they've had little breaks in the clouds. They've had little moments of glimmers of, sh of truth. They've been able to feel a, a light come into their life. Um, a light of happiness, a light of I am okay. Um, a light of not being inferior, uh, a light of being able to be and receive respect, a light of being able to receive compliments and not feel guilty, uncomfortable, or undeserving. Um, they have been able to change to a life that is more deep and meaningful and not superficial and vapid. Oftentimes, the vapid, I feel, is uh, another red flag uh, of a narcissist relationship. <clears throat> and I remember discovering this about 15 years ago. Um, offering nothing that is stimulating or challenging. Offering nothing that is stimulating or challenging. So people might feel that the bottom has fallen out. <clears throat> it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, colorless. And, you know, this might have changed especially when you thought the narcissist was the opposite or all these things. You thought that they are, were very stimulating and challenging when in effect it was only manipulation to deceive you. <clears throat> and the deception is the treating as if you are, you know, unattractive, unworthy of being acknowledged, of being heard, of being recognized. You know, and instead, this dominating behavior that you see from the narcissist. This is not, you know, this is not restricted to any one race. Um, this is global. I mean, this is people experience this in all cultures, across cultures, in between interracial, within race, different, you know, in the workplace, in the family, in love, in business. I mean, it goes into all areas. I feel this is universal and global and that people will begin to connect the dots um, to understand the red flags and then reclaim their victory, uh, reclaim their I am and stop feeling that they are going to tolerate being a victim, that they are okay to call out what is, that they are okay, okay to, you know, call out the past and say, wow, I see the red flags now. I see that I didn't handle it then. But now is different. Now I see it. And it is okay. Seeing is believing. Believe what you see. Know what you know. Embrace your I am that is founded on the positive and allow this uh, foundation of you to grow little by little by little by little by little every day. You don't have to have huge, you know, ginormous strides, the baby steps are going to build you there. It's your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. <clears throat> and I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out, peace be with you, and have a beautiful day.